So let's see what package I received from FedEx that Astrophysics sent. Okay, it's my repaired CP5 that they've packaged up very precisely, very nice. So we'll take a look at this. And then these are the extra M3 uh, bolts that um, I lost one to the motor housing. And um, I asked if they wouldn't send me a few more. Uh, then the extra one I needed that way if I lost any more I'd have them so next I'm going to show you uh, the process that I used when checking to isolate that the issue was in the uh, PC5 not the cables or not the motors and not the mount then we will go over what this cost and also describe exactly what the issue was that caused the problem that uh, you would you would have seen in my first video which I will put a link to in case you haven't seen it so what I did is I sent a link to the video to the AP group and uh, to get some uh, clarification on what might be wrong and then this gentleman here uh, said, did you try to switch the RA and deck cable? Is then the RA motor behaving in the same way? And that was from this Constantin, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And he is from Hamburg, Germany. Well, actually, I never thought to do that. Not thinking that the cables would be bad. But I thought, well, let's give that a try. So basically what I did is I just took the deck cable off, the CP5, and also the back of the Mach 2. Took the right ascension cable off and just moved that cable over to here and hooked up to the deck to deck. And this cable to the RA, right ascension to right ascension, and gave that a try and still had the same problem. I've actually got two sets of cables. The ones that you see here are longer. I ordered these when I was using the Mach 2 with the ATS 12 inch portable pier tripod which I recently sold and so I've just kept using the longer cable. So I thought just for the hell of it let's go with the original cables and I did the same thing. You know deck to deck already RA flipped them around obviously the same thing so cables were not the issue. Then I thought of something else. I thought, what would happen if I took the deck cable on the CP5, crossed it, and put it on the right ascension of the Mach 2, and then took the RA cable from the CP5 and put it over to the deck and crossed them? And what now would happen? Would the deck motor still have the issue seen in video, the previous video that I did? And um, in fact, what happened, now the RA motor on the Mach 2 was acting up. So that told me there had to be something within the CP5. And also, I tried it with the other set of cables. So I, I, I just did everything I could so we've eliminated cables and now we're looking at the CP5 so then after a phone call to George and then uh, further uh, looking into the video and also Mike Hansen from AP 
who I believe is the electronics guru guy there. Um, <clears throat> when I talked to George later in the afternoon, he did say that it would be the CP5, gave me return authorization, and that it had to go back to astrophysics for them to look over. So then Mike did send the video. He said, uh, hi, Tony, you received good counsel from Constantin. I hope I'm saying that name right. And did a good job isolating the fault over the weekend. I will email you privately regarding next steps. So Mike Hansen did, in fact, send me another video. Said he was sorry for your troubles. First, open the lid and make sure the small digital board is saddled all the way into the connector. Please follow these instructions. There was a link. Let me know the results. If this is not the problem, the CP5 will need to come back for repair. If you'd like, we can send you a loaner CP5 to allow you to continue using your Mach 2 while your CP5 is out of commission. We'd need to know the serial number of your CP5 to pre-configure a loaner. So obviously going above and beyond to even giving me a loaner, which I, which I, you know, later said, you no know, was thanks, but you know, uh, I, I wouldn't be doing that. So, but it was, I really appreciate, I mean, it was really, I can't believe that they were going to give me a loaner. So, uh, again, astrophysics going above and beyond with customer service. Now I'm going to show you what Mike said he wanted me to do. And for this, you're going to need a 3 30 seconds Allen wrench. So what you've got to do is take these four corner hex head bolts out, or uh, Allen head bolts. Those have to come undone. And you want to be real careful because there's a thin wire going from the, this base unit to this antenna. So... When you do this, like I said, I've got this towel down here. So what I did, I, you know, take them off, gently put it to the side. All right, so as you can see, I've taken those off. And now we're going to gently lift the box, or the top cover. And there you see the uh, thin wire. And I'm just going to set it like this. Now the next thing we're going to do is you'll see right there below the part number those little fine dots there's two rows of those dots that you see right there they're in the center of the uh, video field of view there in here we're a little bit closer and as per the instructions and I'm not going to touch it I'm not going to do anything but those two that, that right there where those those two rows of dots are it says Push firmly with your thumbs on the two rows of dots. And it says blue arrows because in the PDF or in the link then that you can print out the PDF, there's the arrows pointing to those, uh, those rows right there. So that's why it says that. The small board should not move. If you are able to push the board down, you may have solved the problems with the control box. So once I did that, put everything back together. And this was after work that evening, so I just set the, uh, put the mount, set it up real quick in the garage, um, and went ahead and hooked up the cables, deck to deck, RA to RA, still had the same problem, and so that just verified, because I, when I pushed down on it, I, I didn't have, there, there was no sensation of any movement. But I thought just in case there might have been a, 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 enough con a, of a bad connection, let's go ahead and, you know, test it. And uh, even though, like I said, there was no movement uh, felt. And so, again, that uh, process that Mike asked me to do did not fix the issue. All right, so with that, I will put the cover back on. I'll just lightly seat these in all four corners. Then I'll give each one a slight, just a slight tightening. Nothing too much. And 
and now we will put it on the mount and test it all right guys so i'm in my garage today we're going to test this out i don't know if you can hear the wind but it's very windy and it's raining cats and dogs so if you saw the first video i had taken the deck motor off even though later i found out that that wasn't the issue so i've assembled that and for those allen head bolts you are going to need a two and a half millimeter allen wrench next step before we put the connectors together is to get this inside cover on and those cover bolts require a 764 allen wrench next up the outside cover all right guys we're good to go let's put on the cp5 the cables put some electric to it and see what we get okay guys let's see what happens so let me go to my main menu and let's send this to park one now beautiful sounding took care of it Park five. Beautiful sounding motors. Okay, and Go back to three. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. Fixed. Sounds great. The motors are purring along. CP5's been fixed. And another fine job and customer service from Astrophysics Incorporated. All right, so here's the shipping invoice from uh, Astrophysics. And um, you can see they returned the CP5 control box. And then I had it in that black zippered pouch. And here's the items that they replaced you'll see one of the uh, IC LMD 18200 H bridge whatever that is and then uh, they've got uh, some standoffs there 440s and then they've got uh, Omega digital board assembly with switch then labor evaluate repair and test problem CP5 number 82. CP5 has issued driving deck motor. Solution. Failure was found with the microcontroller and H-bridge. Replace digital board and H-bridge. Program digital board with original data and complete curves. Uh, reprogrammed home position and location of hard stops. Tested. And they didn't charge me anything. This uh, was under warranty. Now, it would have been expensive if I had to pay, but uh, they called this a warranty. And then there you'll see my um, those socketed cap screws that I mentioned previous about losing. And those were uh, $2. And then uh, the shipping, they, sh they shipped it to me uh, via FedEx. And... Um, so there you go. Very pleased they hooked me up. No charge. All right, guys, as promised, here is uh, the analysis of the uh, CP5 as per Mike. And we'll take a look at what the issue was. Also, as per Mike Hansen at astrophysics your 
got a better chance of getting hit by lightning than what happened to my unit. It was just a rare, just a rare event. So this is not something to be expected um, as something that can happen on a uh, regular basis. So symptoms. A terrible sound suddenly appeared in the customer Mach 2 deck axis. By swapping cables and channels, it was determined that the deck control channel in this GTO CP5 failed. The RA channel was fine. The cables were fine. And both axis of the mount were fine. The CP5 was subsequently returned for repair and was confirmed failed on receipt. Troubleshooting. By swapping the various parts of the GTO CB5 with quote known good end of quote parts, it was determined that there were two failures. One failure on a microcontroller PWM output signal and another on a deck motor phase driver H bridge. The H bridge had ruptured leaving residue on the board near the device. This, this is also referred to as quote outgassing end of quote. The board surface was discolored but not damaged. Since there was only one failure system reported, we speculate that the failures are related and one of the failures cascaded to the other and possibly did, did so quite quickly. The natural assumption is that the quote power end of quote device likely failed first since it is subject to much higher stress levels by the nature of its electrical function. Conclusion. Preponderance of evidence suggests the microcontroller failure occurred first and eventually cascaded to the motor uh, drive device by outstressing it. The available evidence merely, quote, suggests, end of quote, the conclusion. It does not, quote, prove, end of quote, the conclusion. This conclusion should be viewed with some skepticism as limited evidence is available after the fact. Conventional wisdom suspects the heaviest dissipator, namely the power circuit, to be most suspect for the initial failure. <clears throat> in fact, the, quote, outgassing, end of quote, of the power device was in a direction that could have easily created a momentary, a momentary bridge between high voltage and low voltage. However, the observed failure mode of the microcontroller does not fully support the theory.